Eurovision 2015 winner and the rumoured host for Eurovision 2016, Mon Zamelo is back with his latest single, Should Have Gone Home. The song tells the story of a man who's had an affair with another woman and then regrets it after. And reports suggest that he wrote the song based on his own past. Now, the music video isn't out yet, but he has, as a little teaser, released the lyric video to go with the song. What do you think of both of them, Patrick? Well, I actually really like the song, and I all, always like Mon's singles. He's a good singer, we all know that. He has good taste in his own music um, industry. So I think that is and a good song for radio stations in Sweden, and also it, 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 will, it will be popular, we all know that. Um, the thing is, with the lyric video, um, he did it by himself, he, he wrote on Instagram um, and it's, it really it shows that he is a good choreographer as well although it's actually easy just film yourself and the other one will make a face shadow and like it's just it, it's still so mainstream, I don't know I, I, but it's a good video and he looks on point as always what can I say, he, he's good Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like in more of a music video, well the lyric video than the song itself because I well, I do like the song I, I think it's a good song but it's like more of the same from once like all of her singles of his singles before uh, Heroes like from his latest album well, not this one the Barcelona Sessions I think it's called uh, it's like all the songs sound like this more or less and they're good but they're nothing new yeah I don't think it's gonna get quite the lasting impact on say some of his Melfa songs like Caramia this is it's one of the few standard songs on his newest album, like the rest kind of blend into one. I suppose he's trying to move away from the cheesy Eurovision angle and maybe try and get a more credibility and move internationally because he has his European tour coming up. So I suppose maybe he wants to reach out beyond Eurovision fans. It'll be interesting to see how his career goes after Eurovision. Like, will he be Emily DeForest or will he be Conchita? <laughs> well, I think it won't do. I think he will have his few songs and people here will listen it maybe there is no no eurovision winner lately except your conchita and fighting for equality the rest is like there is nobody else that that won eurovision and is really popular in different in other countries so i think he will have the same disease as everybody else we're going to look at Ederne's new song and video basta or in english enough in the video we see the spanish star singing in a lovely architecturally designed house while eating some bagels. Now, Lewis wrote up the article on the blog and since he's from Spain he knows quite a lot about it, Derna. So what do you think about her latest single? I don't think that single fits her at all. Because, I, I mean, it's like when... I don't know if you remember when last year Shakira released like a like a kind of reggae single with Rihanna that it didn't fit her at all so this is more or less the same I don't get why like these pop stars do those reggae beats or something but I, I really don't get it and apart from that I think that the lyrics are a bit lame I mean I don't think I don't know if you understand the lyrics but I do and it's like <laughs> it's like when when some lyrics are like uh, taken by like you have to change a lot of the phrase to make it sound good on the song it's a bit weird, and I don't think it sounds good for or for her. I mean, maybe for another singer, but not for her, really. And the video, well, it's like, hey, I'm a and this is Thomas Bakers. They are picking for my videos, so by then, they are great. Come on. <laughs> Actually, when I hear that Adorni has a new song, I was like, yay! And then when I saw the song and heard it and saw the video now, I was like, meh. Mm. I don't like. I, I really don't like it. It's it's, it's as you said, Luis. It doesn't fit Adirne. Like she's that big pop diva having such a bad song. And with the video itself, it doesn't make it actually better because I think since Sia, everybody is dancing in an abandoned hall. Or <laughs> it, it's just nothing new and nothing special. And it's just a bland song. It's nothing really good. In the video, we see Adirne eating bagels at every opportunity. I think they're called Thompson bagels. Thompson Are, these bagels. A big deal? Are these a big deal in Spain, or is Adirne just getting no, the cash it's, and it's going not, on? It's actually not a big deal. I mean, it's like they're introducing them into Spain, so that's why, like, that's, that's not only Adirne, there are like many other stars, like TV stars and movie stars, who are showing how great Thomas bagels are. <laughs> I've never seen them in the supermarket, but when I do, I'll buy them. 
May, and then make an article on Ruby Blocks to show if they are so good as <laughs> <it> says. <laughs> I suppose they make a change from Doctor Dre's beat anyway. Um, yeah, it's more or less the same, but we're talking <laughs> about bagels. <laughs> Israel's Nadav Gwaj is ju has just released his second single since Eurovision, the first one being the Coca-Cola tie-in called Summer Together. Now he's just after releasing Good Vibes, <laughs> which is a funky, upbeat number. What do you think, Patrick? It's a bad song, just saying. I mean, Nadav is an okay singer and he is really nice and all the best to him, but that song is just, that goes nowhere. I mean. Everybody can try to have those Spanish influences in the summer song, but they don't work out in every song, and it didn't work out for him, obviously, for me. I mean, it's such a mainstream song. I sing about ladies, I sing about beaches, I sing about amazing weather, good vibes. But actually, I don't feel the good vibes at all, so I don't understand that. Sorry. I'm surprised that Nadal has actually survived the summer. I'm, I, I mean... I really didn't think he was he was going to release anything else. Because I feel like he's one of those kind of singers that are like the ice cream sellers. I mean, they work during the summer, but then what happens with them during the winter and then the rest of the year? Uh, I, I'm really surprised that Nadal has actually released a second song, but no. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like that. I wasn't a big fan of Golden Boy, but... I mean, like, I tolerated it because it was on the Eurovision, it was fun, but this one is not. I actually quite liked Golden Boy, and I think that he's trying to copy the success of Golden Boy, because if you think back, Golden Boy was like two or three songs that chunks were thrown around, and then they got it together and cobbled it into a new song. Whereas this, he, he's kind of got, this song could be loads of different songs chopped up, because it starts off real mellow and slow. Then next thing it kind of gets a bit upbeat, and like, there's three or four other types of genre funky r b genres mashed in but it doesn't work and you don't really want to go and have your summer together with him or have good vibes with him you just want to turn him off but it's like it's not really it's not even a bit i mean the song itself on in the end it's like a bit slow i mean i i ended up a bit boring with it maybe he's lost his golden shoes maybe yeah they never they never fitted him Ruth Lorenzo, she who represented Spain in Eurovision 2014, getting them a top 10 place, has released her latest single and it's her first one in English for a long time. It's called 1999 and it depicts the tale of her first love as she was turning 16 at the time of the millennium. What do you guys think? I like it quite more than Basta from Adorne. I think she, like the song fits Ruth. It doesn't seem like all of her later songs, like for instance, Flamingos or something like that. But I do, I do like it, yeah. And I've heard that many people compare it to Out of the Woods by Taylor Swift. But I don't really think they are so similar. Well, the song itself is actually really good. I really like it. Although it's not really like like now. It, it, it's maybe a bit like mm -hmm. 2000 and fuck or something it's not 2015 at all for me at least um but i really like ruth's voice and i think it's just it's really sweet story behind it the lyrics are nice and it's kind of like that shows back on her on her teen years it is really it is re really a good song and it's nice to hear it in the radio though it wouldn't do well in eurovision but she was already there so we give it that go but, you know, it's a nice song and she can do whatever she wants, I think. She always sounds really good. I think it's probably her best since Gigantin. Because just like you were saying about Flamingos and some of her other songs, they're a tad forgettable. Because this yeah. song definitely stands out and it is catchy. Maybe it wouldn't top the charts, but it's a step in the right direction for her, I think. And then her voice is wonderful in it, as always. Mm -hmm. and she goes through some registers and emotions. Do you think that if she kept going in this direction that it would be a good idea for her to come back to your vision, or is it okay she's done that move on? Uh, I think this is like a good a good line to follow for her. I would definitely continue this way. She's, I mean, these kind of songs fit her. She sings well and, I don't know, they're radio friendly. They, she, she has got some, some airplay with this one, so I think she... I, Go on with this, maybe for an album or whatever. Not like for all of her career, obviously, but that's for yeah. some of her next singles or whatever. Yeah. I think she should definitely make a video, a music video to that song. But I can already see, actually, like Taylor Swift, she could do it something 
something like that uh, with pictures yeah. from her teen years going back and seeing how she lives now that would be a really good video idea but as you said it she won't do it probably so that's kind of sad no because she's also studying in your face on familiar like I think it starts in two weeks or whatever, I don't know, two or three weeks, I think. So I don't think she has the time for a music video, but yeah, it would be, it'd be nice to see if she, if she does something. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed, she certainly can't do worse than a journey last year. In your vision in Vienna, Il Volo were a trio of young opera singers. Now in their newest single called La Morsi Move, if that's the correct time for the no. we see them as three old men with their faces beginning to melt and they look rather like aliens. Um, but then thankfully that's not them and we move on to the video and it tracks the love story of a boy and a girl who love each other right from babyhood up to the moment they're old people. But then in Volo appear randomly throughout. What do you guys think? Very original. Wow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is original, this is avant-garde, this is everything. No, this is not. I mean, I think that Il Volo are like the parading of Italian. I mean, <laughs> everything about them is like, they, they have to scream at your face that they are Italian, in case you didn't notice. And that's, I mean, it's okay for once, but not like all of their songs. And this one is it's just meh. I'm a sucker for Italian language, sadly, so I always love Italian songs, and especially when Il Volo are singing them. So, Il Volo are amazing for me. I I really love their voices and they're always having good songs and okay nobody can top Grand Amore for me but that song is not unique it's just an Italian song that it's probably about love so that's the basic that is the basic Italian package so I, I really don't don't feel something new but it's a nice lovely song and it's always nice to hear them and I'm sure Austrian radio broadcast to because them because they're so in love with them, um, hearing them daily. So yeah, I think it is a good song after Grandi Amore and yeah, they're popular, they always will be popular in the next year, so keep on working hard. Since you think it sounds a little old, are you disappointed that it's actually a cover version from the 2004 album by Francesco Renga? The thing is, now that I know it's a cover, it's not even magical anymore, it's like sad. <laughs> Like the vi the video itself is nice then, but when it's a cover song, I don't really get it then. I mean, they are good and they have many songwriters who would love to write for them. So why do they do a cover? Like that is sad. It's really sad in Volo. You're so fickle.